This show makes a promise. Women changing the world with science, technology, engineering, and math. It is my sacred duty to make good on the promise. And I take my oath seriously. But also, we like to have fun here. Here's a segment. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I guess I'll go eat worms. Hi, I'm Dr. Brain. My real name is Crystal Dilworth, and I have a PhD in neuroscience, but it's more fun to call me Dr. Brain, so... I'm Dr. Brain! And I'm here to teach you about your brain, my brain, and everyone's brains. We spend a lot of time trying to figure out whether we're in or out of social groups that are important to us. Do they like me? Am I contributing enough? Are they talking about me behind my back? Being part of a group and knowing when we're not is so important for the survival of humankind that our brains evolved a whole collection of brain cells to help us monitor whether we're in or we're out. Those brain cells make up a region called the anterior cingulate cortex. Its job is to constantly scan for social information. The anterior cingulate cortex is really good at detecting errors and inconsistencies. Imagine you're in a group of friends and you're all contributing equally to a conversation. Then suddenly you notice that your friends are only directing their comments to each other and not to you. You have been eliminated from the conversation. At that point, your anterior cingulate cortex is activated, sort of like a social alarm telling you, hey, there's a problem here. They are excluding you. You also might feel rejected and hurt. That's no accident. You see, thousands of years ago, before houses and grocery stores, when early humans lived in small groups, exposed to the elements and hunted for food, being excluded from the group meant you didn't eat have access to shelter, and there was no one else to protect you when you got sick or accidentally encountered a saber-toothed tiger. Early survival depended on acceptance into a family or group with whom you could share protection and resources. Things are a little different now, but being part of a group still does mean access to privileged help and resources. And our anterior cingulate cortex still lets us know if we're in or we're out. When we are excluded from a group, we experience that rejection as emotional and sometimes even physical pain. In fact, scientists recently discovered that your brain categorizes the pain of social exclusion in the same way that it experiences physical aches and pains. The pressure we feel to do what everyone else is doing is what we call peer pressure. And with popularity, relationships, or other resources like the support you get from your friends at stake, sometimes we make decisions that aren't good for us personally just so we can avoid the pain of rejection. Sometimes we're motivated to tease, exclude, or bully others to prove that we are part of the most powerful social group. But just because bullying can be explained with science doesn't mean it's okay or that we can't control it. If you find yourself doing something you know is a bad idea in order to fit in, just tell your anterior cingulate cortex to turn off the alarm and let your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that's responsible for logical thought and predicting outcomes, get you out of there. Unless, of course, there really is a saber-toothed tiger. And then, in that case, run. Bye.